I'm pregnant. Effie, a colleague who claims to be my best friend, suddenly said that to me. And the father, she says it's my fiancé. I lost my fiancé to a useless co-worker who couldn't even do her job properly. And I ended up quitting because it became unbearable to stay at the company. Never in my wildest dreams did I imagine that a complete turnaround in my life was waiting just around the corner. My name is Hannah, and I'm 28 years old. I work in the editorial department for boys' comics at a publishing company. If I say so myself, I'm pretty competent. I manage three comic artists. One is a hit maker and the face of our magazine, another is a veteran with a dedicated fan base, and the third is a talented, promising newcomer who could shape the magazine's future. They all trust me with their work. My job as an editor is basically to assist the comic artists I'm in charge of and make sure they finish their manuscripts by the deadline. I gather reference materials and deliver them to the workplace, and I also bring snacks to encourage the assistants. Depending on the comic artist, I sometimes help brainstorm ideas with them. Comic artists, in my opinion, are creators who build entire worlds with just their talent and give readers dreams and hope. Actually, I used to draw comics myself in my school days. I even had dreams of becoming a comic artist, but I eventually realized I didn't have the talent for it. That's when I decided I wanted to help bring comics to the world, and I became an editor. You really do love comics, don't you, Hannah? That's what Nick, my colleague and boyfriend, says. We've been dating for about two years, and recently we've been talking about getting married, so you could say he's my fiancé. It's not just a desk job, and when one of the artists I'm in charge of calls, I'll come even after hours. It's so often and tough because our schedules don't align well with those of a regular office worker. In that sense, it's convenient to be dating Nick, and he's in the same editing job as me. Well, the downside is that we rarely find time to go on dates. You're lucky, Hannah. You always get the best artists. That's what Kathy, another colleague from the same starting year as me, says. She used to work in the editorial department for girls' comics at the same publishing company, but after a falling out with a prominent female comic artist, she was transferred to our department. It's true that some comic artists can be difficult or quirky, but in Kathy's case, I think the problem lies with her. She's bad with deadlines, makes excuses, and has a habit of blaming others. Because she had a cute, quiet appearance, they thought she'd be better suited to working with male comic artists on boys' comics rather than female artists on girls' comics, a reasoning that would probably cause trouble today. That might be true, but I also put in the effort. I want to help them make great comics. Do you really know your artist's food preferences and hobbies, Kathy? Not really, but I always bring them the trending sweets. It's not about what's trending. You should be bringing them what they actually like. Some people don't even like sweets. I went out of my way to stand in line and buy them, only to be told, I don't really like sweets. I think I mentioned that before. Oh, wait a minute. Wasn't that Mon Blanc cake you brought last time? You just wanted to eat it yourself, didn't you? How can you put yourself before your artists? Hey, come on. What's the harm in that? There's a lot of harm in it. Buying snacks you want and pretending they're for your artists is unacceptable. 
and she lined up for them during working hours. Well, not everyone has the same passion for their work as you, Hannah. I get bummed out when someone said, I wish I had a cute editor like Kathy. Oh, stop it, Nick. I don't like how the two of them are so casual about their jobs. Still, since we're the only three colleagues who started at the same time, we often hang out and grab drinks together. Kathy claims to be a daddy's girl, and apparently her current boyfriend is almost 20 years older than her. My dad passed away when I was little, so I'm really attracted to older men. They're so kind and stable. I don't get how girls my age date guys their own age. Hold on, are you really saying that in front of us, the same age couple? Kathy knows that Nick and I are dating, for me, dating someone 20 years older is unthinkable. When you're 50, they'd be 70. That's like dating a grandpa. We joked like this, and it gave me a sense of relief that Kathy would never be my romantic rival. One day, while I was waiting to meet Nick for a date, Kathy called and asked if I could pick up a manuscript for her because she wasn't feeling well. I could have turned her down, but the artist Kathy works with happens to be someone I've personally supported since his debut. His name is Marvel Shepard, a man in his mid-30s, with tons of potential but no major hit yet. I cancelled my date with Nick and went to pick up the manuscript. Oh, Hannah, is that you? Where is my regular contact? Even though I've never worked directly with him, he remembered my name, and that made me happy. Kathy isn't feeling well, so I came to pick up the manuscript in her place. Oh, really? She seems to be sick pretty often. Is she okay? Maybe she's got a weak constitution or something. I had never heard that Kathy had any health issues. It seemed more like she was using her illness as an excuse to avoid tasks. I'd heard stories about her messing up a book signing event, delivering fan letters six months late, and even bringing Marvel an apple pie when he's allergic to apples. I couldn't believe it. Just the other day, I asked her for some reference photos of abandoned ruins with a fantasy vibe, and she emailed me some blurry random pictures she found online. If it was that easy, I wouldn't have bothered asking. Marvel sighed. I apologized profusely on Kathy's behalf and promised to give her a serious talking to. Maybe it's because my comics aren't that popular that she's being cold to me. That sad comment made me confess something I hadn't planned on saying. I've been a fan of yours since your debut. I even buy your books and proudly display them on my bookshelf. What, Healy? In that case, let me draw your favorite character for you. Marvel was so thrilled, and he carefully sketched my favorite character in my notebook. I was so happy I forgot how angry I was at Kathy. Um, uh, but Marvel still works analog. He even wants reference materials in analog form, and his fans send him letters in the mail. That's so old-fashioned. When I sternly pointed out her mistakes, Kathy refused to take responsibility, insisting she wasn't in the wrong. There are still plenty of comic artists who work analog, and lots of fans send handwritten letters full of emotion. Don't you dare slack off on your work just because you find it inconvenient. Oh no, Hannah, you're scary. Listen, our job is to help the artists create great work. You're not just being careless by bringing them food they're allergic to. You're actively causing harm. Well, I didn't know. It's not my fault. That was a lie. 
Marvel had told me directly that he had made her aware of his allergy. At that moment, Nick walked in and interrupted the conversation. What's going on? Why is there so much tension? Oh, Nick. Hannah's been saying all these mean things to me. Kathy, who wasn't even shedding tears, pretended to cry as she cozied up to Nick in her typical sweet voice. Kathy, did you mess up again, as usual? This wasn't just a simple mistake. I'm talking about your attitude toward your work. We don't need editors who cause problems for the artists. Hey, that's going too far. Don't judge people by your own standards. I couldn't believe my own fiancé was siding with Kathy. Looking back, I realized that my relationship with Nick was already on shaky ground by then. Our views on work and our personal priorities were starting to diverge. I should have ended things then, but maybe I was still clinging to the hope that we could fix things. I wasn't ready to let him go. Afterward, Kathy was removed from handling Marvel's work. It was because Marvel had asked the chief editor for a change, but they didn't tell Kathy the real reason. She believed it was because I had bad-mouthed her to the chief editor, our boss. How could you, telling me like that to our boss? What? I only pointed out your mistakes. I didn't tell anyone anything. Then why am I being taken off his account? The fact that you're his new contact is proof. And she wasn't wrong. Marvel had specifically requested that I become his new contact. While I was thrilled by his request, it only fueled Kathy's misguided belief that I had gotten her kicked off the project. Now I was in charge of four artists, which felt like a lot, so after discussing it with my boss, we decided to assign Kathy to the hit maker artist I had been working with. That artist worked in a production style with plenty of staff to handle research and events, and they never missed a deadline. The main thing the editor had to do was pick up manuscripts and deliver snacks, so I figured even Kathy wouldn't mess it up. Kathy was happy about it, too. Maybe this was a blessing in disguise. I mean, Marvel isn't exactly well known. When I tell my friends about him, most don't even know his name. But now I'm handling a big name that everyone's heard of. She seemed to be in a great mood, and her anger toward me vanished, but it only made me more irritated. I'm really sorry. It seems like my request to the chief editor caused trouble between you and your colleague. Marvel apologized the first time I visited his workplace after becoming his contact. I wasn't sure where the rumor started, but news like this spreads fast, no worries, I'm happy to be your editor. I'll make up for all the time Kathy was slacking. Let me know if you need anything. Thanks. Actually, I feel bad asking so soon. But could you find me an assistant? I asked Kathy ages ago, but... There's a limit to how little she can do her job. I found someone who could match Marvel's art style and wouldn't disrupt the workplace dynamic. Since Marvel is single and the assistants usually ordered delivery for meals, I also arranged for someone to cook, and whenever I visited, I'd even whip up a homemade meal myself. He didn't have a manager, so I handled a lot of his daily administrative tasks too. You're a lifesaver. You find perfect reference materials every time, and I've been able to spend so much more time drawing. I was happy to hear his gratitude. Marvel's work wasn't flashy, but he was an exceptional artist with a unique style and humor that had garnered him a loyal fanbase. I was one of those fans myself. 
He's the kind of artist who likes to take his time and put detail into his work, but with so many tasks and a lack of assistance, he must have had a tough time. Now that he had more time and mental space, the popularity of his ongoing series was rising, and my boss even praised me. Then one day, Nick told me he had something to talk about, so we made plans to meet for dinner. Was it about marriage? Or maybe a breakup? Either way, I felt like it was time for us to finally have a clear conversation. But when I arrived at the restaurant, I found Nick sitting next to Kathy. Not across from each other, but side by side. Something was definitely off, but I sat down across from them in the empty seat. Hannah, I'm pregnant. As soon as I sat down, Kathy blurted that out. What? It's Nick's baby. What? Wait, what about that older guy you were seeing? Oh, about him? We broke up ages ago. With that, Kathy snuggled up closer to Nick. But didn't you say you weren't into guys our age? I know, but you can help who you fall in love with. Huh? Then Nick spoke up. I want to start a family with her. Go ahead. Huh? Start a family, do whatever you want. If that's all you had to say, I'm leaving. I stood up to go. Wait, I feel bad about this. Okay. I'm sorry, Hannah. Both of them apologized at the same time. But the smug look on Kathy's face made me furious. I don't care. You two deserve each other. I said, and Nick responded with a bitter expression. That's exactly what I couldn't stand about you. You act like you're better than everyone just because you're a little good at your job. I hadn't meant it that way, but that's how Nick felt. I'm not looking down on anyone. We just have different values when it comes to work. So, yeah, you two are a perfect match. With that, I left the restaurant. I didn't feel sad. I did feel frustrated, but it wasn't so much because I lost my fiancé. I think it was more because I lost him to Kathy. In hindsight, I should have broken up with him a lot sooner. Thinking back to Kathy's smug face still made me feel awful. Apparently, even after getting married, Kathy plans to keep working. Our editorial department doesn't interfere in people's personal lives, but almost everyone knew I was dating Nick. Then, out of nowhere, it became a different couple. When all is said and done, they love gossip like this, and wild speculation spreads everywhere. I became famous as the woman whose fiancé was stolen by her best friend from work. Not that I ever considered Kathy my best friend, but she must have been spreading stories, some true and some false, all over the place. I knew he was my best friend's boyfriend, but I just couldn't help falling for him. Apparently, she was crying like she was the tragic heroine. And it wasn't just Kathy. I was really put off by the way Hannah treated Kathy. After seeing that, I felt like I had to protect her. Nick was saying things like that too. It seemed like I had become the unbearable woman who harassed her best friend over work, stole the artist Kathy was handling, and eventually got dumped by my fiancé. I'm sure people who knew my work habits didn't believe more than half of it, but still, I felt miserable. Anyway, I felt incredibly uncomfortable. And to make matters worse, I had to see the two of them every single day. Hannah, 
Here's our wedding invitation. You'll come as a colleague, right? The moment Kathy handed me the invitation, I made up my mind to quit. I won't be your colleague for much longer, so no, I won't be attending. And with that, I went straight to the chief editor's office and handed in my resignation, which I had already prepared. My boss tried to stop me, suggesting we talk in a private room. I love this job, and I love the artists I work with, but it's too hard to stay here under these circumstances. Then my boss said something that caught me off guard. To be honest, I'd much rather keep you than the two of them. Could you reconsider? It was clear their evaluation of Kathy and Nick wasn't very high. I appreciate that, but I think I need some time off to relax and recharge. With that, I politely declined. I made sure to personally inform all the artists I worked with about my resignation, bringing snacks as a parting gesture. They all expressed disappointment, and some even said that if I ever ended up at another publishing company, they'd want to work with me again once their current projects wrapped up. Marvel, in particular, apologized profusely, thinking that he had caused the situation that led to my resignation. I'm truly sad to leave, especially since I was so happy to be working with you, Marvel. I meant every word. Just as Marvel's popularity was starting to rise, I had been looking forward to helping him more. Then, Marvel said something unexpected. Um... If you don't have any other plans yet for future work, and only if you'd be interested, would you consider becoming my manager? Huh? Ever since you started working with me, everything's been so much easier. I don't think I can handle things without you anymore. I'd pay you the same salary you're getting now. Though, if it's really high, I might not be able to afford it. He was a bit flustered, but his sincerity came through. Plus, he was one of my favorite artists to begin with. I'd love to. If you're okay with me, I'd be happy to help. And so, I became Marvel's manager. Turns out, my salary had been much lower than Marvel had imagined, so there wasn't an issue. Normally, Marvel is pretty laid back, but when it comes to his comics, he's uncompromising. The more I worked with him, the more I could see how much he loved comics in his own work, and it made me admire him even more. The person Fu took over my role as his editor was the same man Fu had mentored me when I was new. I had no idea you became his manager. But now that Marvel is doing so well, it all makes sense. Keep up the great work. I won't spread any rumors, but you know, in this small industry, it'll eventually get back to the department. I know it's a small industry, and I'm fine with that. All I cared about was making great work with Marvel. One day, Marvel came to me beaming with excitement. Hey, Hannah. Lately, one of the girl characters is getting really popular. It's all thanks to your advice. I had always thought Marvel's male characters were incredibly cool, but his female characters lacked a bit of personality. I really don't understand women at all, so your input is a huge help. That bratty girl character. I thought she was super annoying. But she's actually fun to write, and she's surprisingly popular. Yeah, in comics, that kind of cunning personality can actually be refreshing. But in real life, it's unbearable. That character is modeled after Kathy, your former editor. Oh, that makes sense. I see, I see. It's her. When I said that, Marvel burst out laughing like a child. And this other girl, 
She's based on you, right, Hannah? What? No way. I'm not that cool of a character. She's more like an ideal woman. Is that so? I've always thought she resembled you, and I found her really charming. That's why I've put so much effort into drawing her. What? Hearing him say that made me happy, and I couldn't help but wonder, isn't this kind of like a confession? Does that mean you think I'm charming? What? Did I say that? I did, didn't I? Oh man, I'm sorry, that must have sounded creepy. You looked so apologetic, and I found it adorable. Not creepy at all, I love your comics. But I also admire your dedication to your work. Honestly, I think you're amazing. Though Marvel might look like a big teddy bear, he was so much more wonderful than Nick ever was to me. His comic sales were soaring, and it was officially getting an anime adaptation. The media coverage increased, and so did the number of interviews. As a manager, it was a good kind of problem to have. I had completely forgotten about Nick and Kathy until I had to stop by the editorial department. Oh, to think of it, those two got married, didn't they? When I arrived at the office, I noticed Kathy, who was now visibly pregnant. Oh, long time no see. I greeted her cheerfully, but she just glanced at me and quickly walked away. After handing some paperwork regarding rights over to the chief editor, he invited me for some coffee, and we moved to the break room. Honestly, it's been a nightmare since you left. The chief editor sighed. Kathy really messed things up with that hitmaker artist she was handling. What? Even that artist? I thought anyone could manage that one. I was shocked. That artist was incredibly stable, and the only real tasks were picking up manuscripts and delivering snacks. It seems she angered the artist by making this comment when she went to pick up the manuscript, one of her few tasks. Aren't you going to switch to digital? Most artists these days are using digital. I apologized profusely, and now I'm handling that artist. Kathy has been reassigned to organizing reference materials, though she's not really doing that properly either. But we can fire her just because she's bad at her job. She's also planning to take both maternity and parental leave. He sighed again. Nick's not faring much better. I gave him your skilled artist to handle, but the artist keeps comparing him to you. I've gotten complaints that he's slow, doesn't anticipate needs, and just isn't up to par. His shoulders slumped in defeat. I felt bad for him, but there was nothing I could do about it. At least the new artist was assigned to a competent editor, so I was relieved about that. On my way out, I passed by the archives and Sonic and Kathy chatting. It seemed like they were barely working. Nick noticed me and, with a bitter expression, said, Long time no see. Looks like you're doing well. Yeah, things are going great. The anime adaptation is in the works, and we're even talking about a game adaptation. So it's been busy, but fulfilling. I smiled brightly, and he responded with a quiet, frustrated tisk. I couldn't believe I had once been engaged to this guy. Oh, by the way, I'm getting married to Marvel. From now on, I'll be supporting him both as his manager and his partner. What? You've got to be kidding me. He's making so much money these days. Kathy blurted out, completely missing the point. Neither of them offered me a single congratulations. That's so unfair. He was my client first. 
Effie started spouting nonsense, and I couldn't help but laugh inside. So, I decided to tell a little lie. That's right, we're going all out with the wedding reception, planning a world tour for our honeymoon, and thinking of buying a penthouse and a high-rise. I said that as I flashed the big diamond engagement ring on my finger. The truth was, only the ring was real, the rest was made up on the spot. Though, it wasn't entirely impossible. Seeing the utterly frustrated look on Kathy's face was incredibly satisfying. Isn't Marble just a dorky guy who looks like a bear? Nick said, trying to salvage his pride. What a small man. He's a brilliant and amazing bear. He's ten times the man you'll ever be. That was the truth, too. Well, take care. I wish you both happiness. As I walked away, I could hear them bickering behind me. Not long after, I heard that Kathy had been slapped with a compensation claim from the wife of the older man she had been seeing before. Turns out, he wasn't single after all. Nick, on the other hand, was apparently saying, I'm not even sure the baby is mine, but there's no way to know until the baby is born. With their lack of work ethic and motivation, people were already giving them the cold shoulder at the office. If this scandal went public, I figured they'd find it hard to stay there, but knowing them, I wouldn't be surprised if they stuck around anyway. In any case, I doubted they had a bright and happy future ahead. A grand wedding, world tour, and a penthouse. Ha, huh, you really went for it. Marvel said with a laugh after hearing my story. You're not really into big flashy events, are you? A world tour sounds tempting, but I don't want to disappoint your readers by putting this series on hold. As for where we live, I don't really care. Got it. Well, after we finish this series, let's take a long break and go on a world tour. Yeah, and we'll take tons of reference photos. You really are the perfect editor. But you know, now that we're married, it's okay to be a little more selfish. Marvel said that with a warm smile. I already felt like I was living a dream, creating worlds together through his comics. Could life really get any better? It's marvelous, Marvel. I could help but make puns. To be noted, Marvel's family runs a marble supplier.